God's love in my soul, got that feeling of the Holy Ghost. I'm a getting high, high, high on Jesus. I'm a getting high, high, high on Jesus. High, high, high on Jesus. Oh, his hands they did nail to the cross he carried up Calvary's hill. I'm a getting high, high, high on Jesus. To you from Texas this week, all jacked up on the road with Jesus, having a good time, traveling, touring, <laughs> hammer drunk, coming to a rodeo near you. I uh, want to talk to you a little bit this week about uh, the uh, glorious freedom with which we have been set free, the all-sufficient work of Christ's sacrifice, which cannot be added to, cannot be taken away from. In Galatians chapter 5, Paul says it is for freedom you have been set free. It is for liberty that you have been set free. Don't let some religious ding-dong come and tell you you got to add something on to the finished work of Christ, some outward circumcision, some type of a, a prayer mechanism, fasting mechanism, some type of spiritual discipline that is somehow going to add on to what Jesus Christ has already done. Paul said, who cut in on you, Galatians 5, 7, and, and prevented you from running a good race? I tell you, that kind of influence does not come from the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit sets us free for freedom's sake. God wants us to be free. Paul also says in Romans chapter 6, that uh, what are we now that we're free? Is this freedom to go sin? He says, he says, no way. It's freedom from sin, not freedom to sin. And you know, I want to be known uh, when I die and, and, I, and I go on to, to glory land where I'm already seated right now, Ephesians 2, 6, in heavenly places. When I go on to be with the Lord, Sheikah Bonky, apart from my body here, I want to be known for things that I am for, not things that I'm against. So we don't always go around bashing things and, and talking about what we are not, but rather we like to tell what we are for. We are for the finished works of Christ. We are for the gospel. We are for the revelation that on the cross you were set free from your sinful nature. That as a believer, you don't have a sinful nature anymore. You're not a sinner anymore. You're a new creation. But nevertheless, because we are such a grace-focused ministry, because we go around explaining the freedom for which we been set free, a lot of people will misinterpret this, and it is imperative sometimes that we explain uh, what this freedom really is. This is freedom from sin, and this is freedom from the sinful nature, that you're not a sinner anymore. In Galatians chapter 5, I'm going to read uh, to you here a little bit. Paul says, he says, uh, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So you are a spirit being now. You are a spirit being in a natural body walking out an existence with Christ, united with Christ. You are set free from that old sinful nature. You don't have an old fleshly nature anymore. Even though you have a physical flesh body, you don't have the sinful nature, which is the bad flesh. Your physical body is not evil, okay? But but the sinful nature, the, the, the naughty, wicked flesh with its passions and its lust, You've been set free from that thing. And uh, it says that the flesh wars against the spirit, and the spirit wars against the flesh. These two are contrary to one another. Some people will try to tell you that this is a war going on within the believer, but no, it's impossible. God's not shacked up with the devil inside of you. This is not an internal war. This is a, a war. See, th these are two polar opposites. It's like trying to put a, two positive ends of a magnet together. They push against one another. You see, the spirit and the flesh, uh, fleshly nature, sinful nature, do not coexist together. You have been had that old sinful nature circumcised away, cut off once and for all. Colossians 2, Romans 6, that old uh, nature was buried in the ground with Christ. And so now you're walking in the Spirit. You are not walking in the flesh any longer. It says if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of flesh are evident. Now we have to understand if we're set free from our old nature, then we shouldn't be walking in naughtiness. Okay, what are the works of the flesh? Okay, let's just talk about this a little bit. They are adultery, fornication, which is any type of sex outside of marriage between a husband and a wife of opposite sexes, uh, uncleanness, lewdness, uh, idolatry, which is any type of addiction, 
uh, sorcery, hatred, contention. Contention is uh, strife. It's, it's picking fights just to pick fights. It's causing schisms just for the sake of causing schisms and getting attention. That is contentions, okay? Jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions in it just for you, in it just for your own little shingding. Uh, dissensions. Dissensions are, again, just uh, this, this schismatic kind of just, just causing ruckus, causing fights for the sake of causing brawls. That is not of the spirit. Okay, now we do oppose uh, religion. We do stand up for the truth. We do oppose the devils of hell. But let me tell you, God does not want us in the church just causing dissensions for the sake of causing dissensions. Okay, that's a work of the old man. That old you is dead. So if you're doing that, stop doing that. Uh, heresies. Heresies are a work of the flesh. Now, let me tell you, heresies are not just, you know, uh, just simply, you know, what we think of as standard heresy. You know, heresy can be uh, just a, 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 a propulsion to always go try and to preach some kind of weird stuff, okay? Heresies is not just, you know, coming against like the Apostles' Creed itself, but uh, a spirit of heresy is something that always has to push us for something more, something weirder, something just outside of, uh, you know, uh, ordinary paradigms. And now, now we do preach about a lot of weird, crazy miracles and a lot of mystical uh, realities, but you see, there's some Something about being orthodox, even in that. And I'm telling you guys, you, you got to get hold of this because there's a lot of preachers out there today, a lot of prophets out there today that, you know, people are hungry and, and, and they'll eat anything when they're hungry. And people that don't understand the bliss of the gospel and aren't satisfied in the finished works of Christ are going to be out there looking for something weird, looking for something to eat. And there's a lot of so called prophets out there that'll give you something to eat that's not a healthy diet. There are prophetic people out there that literally teach all kinds of weird, crazy, stuff that's just not founded in scripture. It's just founded in their imagination. There's one prophetic guy, again, no, no names here, <laughs> but uh, who teaches that there was a whole creation before Adam, which is gap theory, which is bad theology, right? And that all these reptilian creatures, which are now like aliens, come to, to search us out and try to get our DNA, and that they're based out of Area 51, which has 13 levels down to hell. <laughs> I know this is the weirdest sounding stuff, but these are like big name prophetic who's who list type of prophet, so-called prophet people that are out there teaching garbage like this. They literally teach, this This same person teaches that uh, Eve slept with the serpent and that Cain was literally like a physical descendant of Satan and that all of humanity is infected with sa Satan. I'm telling you guys, just bad theology. <laughs> Oh my goodness, shiggy diggy diggy. They teach that like uh, if you eat gold, like you're supposed to eat gold, and this the uh Adam ate gold and that he was like part human, part gold. <laughs> I know this sounds ridiculous, guys, but I'm telling you, there are people that are preaching their own imagination. And let me tell you, if you've been caught up in this stuff, let me tell you what it is. You, you may think that it's something cool and something new and something fresh, and it's going to lead you into more freedom. It's going to lead you into bondage. It's going to lead you into thinking you have to ascend certain types of levels. These guys teach that heaven has like 17 or 21 levels. And you're, you're instead of believing that you're already in the creamy center of heaven's Twinkie because of the work of Jesus Christ, you're going to think that by some kind of special discipline or prayer routine or some kind of formula or hocus pocus thing that you have to climb up into heavens, you have to somehow go and uh, and beat up all the second heaven stuff and that your job is more important than it actually is, all right? Your job is to drink what Jesus has done, okay? And don't let yourself be subtly caught up into works because this Galatian bewitchment doesn't just work with mainliner religious people, but it also works with charismatic so-called prophets, okay? They're the worst kinds of all. So I would encourage you be set free. Don't jump into weird heresies just because you're looking for something different. God's not looking for you to be hungry for something more. He's looking for you to be satisfied with what he has done, the work of Jesus Christ. His work is enough. If you're looking for something more than Jesus, then uh, maybe you haven't found him. Uh, what are other works of the flesh? Envy, murders, drunkenness, not drunkenness in the spirit, but drunkenness in the natural, uh, revelries, that's partying uh, apart from Jesus, we get to party with Jesus, and the like, of which I told you beforehand, just as I told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's not you. That old you is dead. That old you is buried. You don't need that stuff anymore. The new you walks in the fruit of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, 
Long suffering, long suffering is not you go suffer a long time. It's a sweet fruit of the spirit that enables you to be jacked up even when you are suffering. Long suffering is a good fruit. Uh, Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. There's no law against this. There's no law against joy. You can have as much joy as you want, as much love as you want, as much of all these good, sweet fruits as you want. Shika, bonky, bonky. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Shika, ba, ba, ba. Your old nature died with Christ. Your old sinful self doesn't exist anymore. I would encourage you just to eat of that sweet fruit. Uh, If you've been bound up with some things, I just want you to realize right now that that old nature has been nailed to the cross with Jesus. It doesn't even exist anymore. If you're walking in some of these things, walking in contentions, walking in dissensions, walking in this stuff, it's just because nobody told you that that's not you anymore. The old you is dead. Let your mind be renewed right now. You are a happy new shingding you. Uh, God bless you. Yeehaw in the glory.